One of the main things I appreciate the most about the horror genre is how versatile it can be. And that's why, in some ways, I think horror can be compared to... Rice. When by itself it's pretty basic, but tasty nonetheless. Although when something is added to it, or when it comes accompanied by something else, it may have an extra taste or add a different flavor to the dish. But the rice itself is fundamentally the same. In the case of horror, when well executed in a story, it matches with completely different narrative types, such as adventure, action, comedy and drama. But it can also renew itself, adding more layers and new perspectives on the approach of themes and situations, often added up with unexpectedly good results. That's one of the many reasons I find The Tension, a Taiwanese horror game developed by the Red Candle team, one of the best pieces of horror media to come out in the last decade. Even though it has pretty simple graphics, gameplay, premise, and even a few jump scares, the game has several elements within its structure that manages to distinguish itself from other similar titles, even from what I think is one of its main inspirations, Silent Hill. But first, let me contextualize you into the game's plot. The tension is set in 1960s Taiwan, during a period of martial law known as the White Terror. The students Wei Shun Ting and Fong Rei Xin find themselves trapped inside their school during what appears to be a storm preceding a hurricane when the place starts to suddenly change into a vivid manifestation of a nightmare. While trying to escape, they begin to run into hidden troops and unveil mysteries from the dark past hidden in that school's history, which are going to change their lives forever. While this very quick synopsis doesn't make any justice to this masterpiece of a game, the real-life event mentioned in there called the White Terror, which was one of the darkest times in Taiwan's history, and also the second longest period of martial law in the history of humanity, is one of the several elements that makes the tension such a unique experience if compared to other horror titles. And that's a decision of the developers to incorporate their own culture into the game, in a way that feels organic, and that is not only there for the sake of aesthetic distinction, which although it makes for a very cool looking level design, is an aspect that only scratches its surface. Needless to say, it was a very successful choice, especially because these historical, religious and even mythological elements of the Taiwanese culture were implemented to the game in a form of simple but cleverly designed gameplay mechanics, sometimes challenging puzzles, and a well-told character-driven narrative. These aspects, for most of the time, are pretty noticeable and have a very important function at developing the game's progression and its plot, but there's a fair amount of them that are applied with subtlety enough to give more depth and substance to what is being shown to us, which results in a large enrichment of the story being told. One pretty good example of that is a fairly easy puzzle to solve that's set in the second chapter, when you enter a room with dozens of creepy puppets in a furnace at the end, where to get an item of importance, you have to find and burn spirit money, which is used in the Chinese culture as papers made into offerings for Asian gods and spirits, to appease them and seek for their help, protection, and even to pay old debts. Instead of giving a note explaining exactly what the player should do to progress, like the developers were planning to do, they fortunately decided to give that tip through a quick monologue made by the main character that not only gives a clue of what should be done to beat the puzzle, but it also delivers some information about race, past and personality, as well as how that piece of culture and tradition relates to her personal life which allows us to empathize and connect more with her. These occasional bits present in the attention structure allows a subtle development to the character of Fong Rei Xin, as well as the narrative itself and all the themes conveyed in the story. But no other example of a piece of history and culture incorporated into this game affect all of its most important elements, like the presence of the White Terror, 
which is much more important than just a plot device so the story can have a political backdrop and a reason to approach dark subjects, since it's directly intertwined to the way the game and its narrative progress, to Ray's main development as a character, to the environment around her, as well as the central themes that are essentially about freedom and independence. As expected from a story that is set in a dystopian society sunk into the oppression of a government that values outdated moralities and treats with extreme violence those who contradict or question its integrity. You can clearly see that imposition of fear affecting the characters on many levels, to the point of interfering in their personal lives, the way they talk, act, and even how they see the world they live in. And it makes total sense that most of the main characters are adolescents. Normally, during military regimes like these, schools were some of the most watched places, and not because of the student's safety, but to ensure that the teachers were not introducing them to subjects that might incite revolutionary thoughts, that the students are not reading material forbidden by the government, or having questionable behavior. Being young and growing up at times like this must surely be a painful experience, especially when you are at an age where most of us become vulnerable to a myriad of emotional outbursts that changes our personalities and behavior for the years to come. They are coming to a point of their lives when they have to decide what they will do after they end school, find out which places they will belong to in the cold and scary world of adulthood, and run after their sole desired independence. Freedom of expression at this phase is something truly essential for young people, and having to oppress those feelings and think very carefully about what they are about to say because it could actually end up causing their deaths results in the growth of fear, anxiety, and a lot of uncertainty of what's going to happen in their future and even about their own identity. Surely, these are difficult things to think about when your country is living through a 38-year-old martial law that kills and tortures innocent people around you for just saying their minds out loud. The Secret Book Club plot explicitly explores those aspects of the subject, while Ray's love plot, which is directly connected to the letter, is much more personal and symbolic, where most of the psychological horror elements are applied into the narrative and what most fleshes out what Ray must go through to grow up and learn to have responsibility for her actions, to find her independence and detach herself from certain desires, feelings and external influences that keep her from doing so. Those narrative choices applied to the story are also related to the white terror and other cultural elements that mostly come in the shape of subtexts, such as the Diamond Sutra that is about, in an extremely superficial way of explaining it, the detachment of the self from preconceived notions of reality, and the Yi Xing Book of Changes, which is in the game in the form of a puzzle and says that there is nothing to change, there is only change. In other words, Ray mustn't stop being herself, but in order to survive and grow up as a person, she must learn how to change and not resist those changes. Or maybe I'm just overinterpreting things, which might be the case. And since it all comes back to the White Terror, it also has a really important role at defining the design of certain puzzles and the scenery, which still manages to be effectively scary without the need of absurdly good graphics, constant jump scares, or extremely gory, disgusting imagery to make it feel disturbing or heavy. The school that most of the game is set in is gloomy and eerie, emanating an atmosphere that gives it a strange sense of loneliness, abandonment and oppression, which are feelings enhanced by the dim lights which struggle to illuminate the empty, dirty rooms and corridors, almost overtaken by an overbearing darkness that casts large shadows on the walls. As if there is a tyrannical force trying to hide itself and its secrets deep within every brick in its structure. All of that while evil spirits wander these hallways, lost in an environment that was supposed to be safe and welcoming, but now is hostile and scary. And I may have also overinterpreted on that as well.
There are many other examples I could have used to show you guys how well the Taiwanese and Chinese culture and folklore were represented in the Tenshin's game design and narrative, such as the presence of the puzzle involving Hei by Wuxiang, the deities responsible to get the spirits of the dead to the underworld, the city god Cheng Huang, which is a main plot device together with the Ying Yang Po, the presence of Taoist talismans on the walls, the enemies we face, which are directly linked to the Asian concepts of death and ghosts and to be avoided, the player must hold their breaths and look away or give them an offering to appease their desires, and many other things that could be dissected but would end up giving major spoilers or taking too much time off the video. As I said, um, um, that, um, let me see here, um, uh, twice, I could be very well just be overinterpreting their meaning to be in the game. But my reason to think that way is because nothing in detention is there for the sole reason of just being there. Practically everything has a purpose to exist within the game, be it for story progression, character development, atmosphere enhancement, gameplay dynamic, exposition of information about the lore, to evoke a certain kind of emotion or reaction from the player, historical contextualization, all of the most important and notable elements serve the plot structure in some way or another. Except for that dick button wall, which is not important or serve the plot in any way but is notable as fuck. With that, I wish more games set in foreign countries would delve deeper into the history of these nations and make meaningful and captivating experiences that approach certain subjects from the narrative standpoint that scratch more than just the surface of these cultures, showing the players what they mean to the people who live in those places from their point of view, how their traditions affect their lives and what kind of legacy important events from the past, good or bad, left for the newer generations. Of course, making a game set in a nation that you weren't born or didn't grow up in is something really difficult to do, so developers prefer to explore those aspects through visuals and more conventional, easy methods to adapt those cultures into their projects, instead of misrepresenting them and give people around the world the wrong impression of the place. Surely, there are some exceptions that were achieved with a lot of study and dedication, but the tension had the privilege of being told by people that were born in the country its story is set in and that grew up learning and practicing the traditions incorporated in the game. If it was not for the inclusion of these distinct cultural elements, perhaps the tension's story would have still been great, but it would not have been as memorable. So I guess I'm kind of glad the developers decided to leave the previously planned dystopian setting based on George Orwell's 1984 aside, since the country of Taiwan lived through a dystopian backdrop. It's one of the main reasons that made this game so successful, so much so that the game received a pretty good movie adaptation that, while not being as scary and not having developed some of the cultural aspects as deep as it could, the characters, the events, and the political discussions approached in the script are well adapted enough for a good and coherent experience for fans and those who never played the source material. There is also a Netflix adaptation that came out at the end of last year. It tells a story set after the events of one of the game's endings, but it's kinda slow and it manages to be even less scary than the movie, although it compellingly develops the characters and plot, while also approaches the main themes in a different way from previous entries, ended up becoming a pretty good adaptation and a well-told drama story. On that note, at first glance, the tension may seem to have that same haunted school premise we all seen before, with the environment changing around the characters in a creepy surrealist fashion and scary ghosts creeping around the corridors, while it also follows a lot of conventions from the entering the character's mind to find out a terrifying truth about their past psychological horror trope. But it's actually a thoughtful, heartbreaking, poignant and beautifully told coming of age story in a dark, eerie, disturbing, depressive, and cruel setting typical of the horror genre, that, mixed with meaningful symbolism that directly resonates with its main themes, makes for an emotionally charged scary tale.